some point years ago I've decided I was going to do it. But you, you say those things to yourself and it takes you, yeah, it's years till you actually believe it. World champion. The two times I competed in 2020, I was the fastest guy. Both races were soaking wet. You know, am I just a wet guy? I haven't shown it yet that I could actually be there on every track every single weekend. So going forward into 2021, I had a chip on my shoulder. From the best country in the world, Scotland, welcome Mr. Reese Wilson. <laughs> Wow, Reese. Uh, you know, we've seen that, that incredible uh, movie there with Cade, really smooth surfaces, but the rough and tumble of World Cup downhill racing is quite far removed from that, isn't it? I mean, you mentioned, you mentioned in your film that, you know, you had a chip in your shoulder going into 2021. I mean, you literally could have had a chip on your shoulder because Snowshoe, it's, it's a pretty involved place for a World Cup racer, isn't it? Yeah, Snowshoe, Snowshoe was a massive race. That was, I guess, the first back-to-back uh, -back race we'd done. So two races in, in one week. So it ended up as being six days of riding one of the gnarliest tracks we ride all year, back-to-back. -back. So, yeah, by the end of the sixth day, we were absolutely smoked. It was a big... Tired. <laughs> it was a big, big week. So to excel on that week was uh, almost a surprise to me, to be honest. At the end of a season, you're normally pretty tired. I think it was, it was just the best, of the best of a bad bunch almost by that point. So, yeah, so, yeah some week. I mean, uh, it's quite different. I mean, you were world champion in Leogang. Now, it, it, Leogang, when you won, it was almost like winter in the Alps, wasn't it? But, you know, Leogang and, and Snowshoe, they're, they're, they're very different challenges, aren't they? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Leogang was, yeah, like, like, I guess like being in Wales in January, it was, Scotland's the same. It's miserable, bottom bracket, deep snow. Kind of question why you were there. And, yeah, leaving the gondola with full-on waterproof hydromatic gloves on goggles, roll-offs, hood up over my helmet, freezing cold. Crazy, because we never normally race World Cups in that in those sort of conditions, but for UK people, that's just normal. We're riding that all winter, we're training that all winter. It was it was just another day. It didn't really feel like a, a shock to the system. Okay, you're talking UK people. Now, Cade, that was actually the last we saw of you at Lea Gang, kind of get into grips with the mud, or maybe not get into grips with the last Instagram I saw of you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I took a crash in lens hide the next next round and yeah hit my head has to take um, some some precautions it's the way racing goes unfortunately but yeah it is the way we're, racing goes yeah we're getting back onto it now hopefully start doing some posts and stuff soon uh, did you fall in fall in a stream earlier today i did <laughs> went trials biking fell in the stream <laughs> Uh, all right, Rhys, uh, let's talk about Flying Scotsman a little bit because it's, it's such an amazing project. What was creating something like that for, for you? I guess, there's a, I don't know if the, the truth's ever really been spoken about that, but it was never actually planned, really. It was what Max decided that he was going to film my whole season and then we would see how the season went and make something of it at the end. I never wanted my voice in any of it. I just wanted it to be no like a, a 10 minute just writing video because I always thought a whole season compressed down with just action would be amazing and then Max being the kind of story guy he is was like we can't possibly just waste this waste this season and he always does this as well jumps in the <laughs> editing booth and turns a two minute video into a 10 minute video so a 10 minute video turned into a 50 minute video and hindsight really glad we done it it was amazing um, but I don't say my role was just I was just racing World Cups he just filmed the whole thing and edited it so all the credit in my opinion goes to him I just I was doing my job and I was busy doing it so Amazing. And shout out to um, Max and Glenn. I think they're in the audience, Max, aren't they? Max, Glenn. Yeah, all the Sleeper Collective guys are here somewhere. I can't see. Blinded. Amazing. And uh, did you get much sort of creative control, like in terms of how it got together? I mean, you were talking about Max in the, in the editing suite. I mean, did you, did you get much say? I think I'm pretty, pretty mean on iMovie. I can knock up a pretty good video <laughs> in there, but that's about as far as my editing skills go. So, no, I just, I just left him to it. He's got a cracking little hobbit hole at home. He's got the fire on, just sat in there on his own for months and months and months sticking that together. It really is a, a long process. And I'd go along multiple times and he'd show me bits and 
do what everybody else does, cringe at my own voice and go, oh, get me out of here. And uh, just left him to it. And uh, yeah, that's what he's created. So pretty cool. Uh, just go back to racing. Uh, Leo Gang and Lenzai are the first two races in 2023. Obviously, they've been really good places for you. And then it goes to Val de Sol, obviously one of the most biggest challenges for a downhill racer. But with that too comes more calculated risks, isn't it, would you say? Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, I guess we've been pretty repetitive with going to tracks now. It's weird that we have Lenzer Hyde and the, the calendar's almost flipped with World Champs being at Fort William at the end of the year. That's normally at the beginning. So it's nice to turn up to these venues and at a different time of year and see the scenery at a different time of year. So I'm fairly looking forward to it. Um, there's going to be a lot of challenges. I think Val de Sol, hopefully we're going to get a bit of change there. The track's been the same for a really long time and it is. I mean, it used to be rough 10 years ago. Now it is really rough. It's a bit of a hellhole. So... Hopefully they take us down the B line, we get some fresh loam and we can take it back to the 2007, 10 days when it was real proper downhill. So <laughs> looking forward to that. Sort of stage. <laughs> nice. And we've seen you at Fort William and then we haven't really seen you uh, kind of after that. Can you kind of give us a bit of context about, about why, that, why that is? Yeah, I had a bit of a wild year. Um, I guess in simplest form, I, I, I bashed my head multiple times. Um, obviously, it's been a crazy few years for everybody with COVID being introduced, and totally. there's a lot of athletes experienced a lot of problems that they haven't really had answers for. I know, obviously, Kate's, Kate's girlfriend, Tani's had similar stuff, um, and a lot of people going to a lot of different specialists and getting a lot of different answers and a lot of reasons, and the COVID thing kind of kept coming up for a lot of people, so... It was almost just a concussion that then snowballed with COVID uh, inflammatory symptoms and all sorts of stuff. And before I knew it, it was just, my brain was just completely scrambled. I wasn't thinking straight. I was making terrible decisions. Emotions were all over the place. And I mean, honestly, it got to the point where I didn't know what was, what was sky and ground. Like I really was. And that was at the point when it clicked for me and was that like, something's definitely not right. But Well, wild. folks, let's, uh, let's have a look at uh, Reese in action between the tapes with the Flying Scotsman. Not a whole lot of room for line choice. In fact, I really don't think there was any line choice. Everybody's just on the same line and you have to go as fast as you possibly can and make zero mistakes. Two races in the one week though, so it was six days of back-to-back -back riding. In reasonable heat, conditions were good. Track conditions were good, we didn't really get any rain. It seemed like just the perfect weekend and had that same flow mindset on my warm-up. The song that I had on was just suiting me perfectly. My, my, my zen was just bubbling away and got in the gate there and I was like, yeah, I'm having this. So just eight riders left to go. And now it's the 2020 World Champion, Reese Wilson. I think qualified, but more interestingly, he was third in split number three on this track. So some issues right in the last sector. Flying Scotsman. Oh, and he's up by over a second! Wow, well, look at this from Reese Wilson! Fastest in this section! Takes a high line like Charlie did, maybe where he goes. Oh, seven. Loses nothing to Bruni through there. Could still be green. And he's still up, but he's lost around half a second then, Reese Wilson! Hopping, breaking the bike. Different line there. Went low. So then when I got to that pedal, that absolutely pedaled my ass off. You can just hear it in the live feed. I screamed at myself, real angry. Wow, look at that, losing a second between split three. If you like this conversation with Cade Edwards and Reese Wilson, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as checking out the Kendall Mans Festival player, where not only will you find the remainder of this chat from our Kendall bike night, you'll also find over 400 different films and collections to choose from, so make sure to check out the link in the description below.